Oh my god. Oh my god. And like it was right at this. Oh my god. <sighs> I am struggling. <laughs> Alrighty, sit. <laughs> oh my god. The only. <laughs> my voice keeps cracking. Oh my god. Hey, how's it going? How's life? My name is Sophia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing a reading vlog. This is going to be a black love romance reading vlog. Now, if you know anything about me and if you've been watching my channels for the past couple of years, you know that Fantasy is my bread and butter and I rarely if ever go outside of the genre but this year 2022 has been the year of experimentation. I thought it would be fun to do a reading vlog dedicated to black love romance. Now I scoured the internet and I found four romances to read for this vlog. But without further ado, let's get into the video. The first book I read for this reading vlog is going to be Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney. In this story, we are following our main character, Quinn, who deals with anxiety. As a result, she writes lists in her journal as a coping mechanism. One day her journal gets stolen and she is blackmailed into completing tasks on the list lest her secrets get revealed to the entire school. Quinn gets the help of a classmate named Carter and he helps her complete tasks on the list while also trying to help her figure out who's the blackmailer. Alrighty, so this is going to be my first update for this alleged vlog. We'll see how it goes. But the first book I decided to read for this vlog is going to be Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney. I am about halfway through this story and surprisingly I'm enjoying it. Like I was hoping I would like it but I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. So far I love Quinn as a character. She's very honest and she's trying to do her best in life and I feel for her. She's also a very passive character who doesn't really know how to stick up for herself and she's also very shy and reserved and so seeing Quinn come out of her shell throughout this series is fun it's cute and we'd love to see it carter on the other hand is like the exact opposite like he says what he means he's not very shy and he's very direct as well and so that dichotomy is just so cute to me I love their relationship. It's so precious and so far it's been slow burn and I'm enjoying the slow burnness of it all. I'm also really enjoying the side characters. Olivia, who is Carter's best friend, is like so badass. She's so badass and she's known to beat up racist white people. We love to see it. Also within the story, the author deals with themes of race and microaggressions and I think that she does an amazing job. There's just something about a black author writing a black character that just speaks to my soul, okay? Like, this is the type of story that I would have loved as a teenager. 
and even though I feel some type of way that I didn't get the representation I feel like I deserved as a teen I'm happy that younger generations are getting more diverse representation and seeing themselves more in literature so that's great depending on how this ends this could be a four a 4.5 potentially even a five star like it's just that cute to me okay but yeah um that was it for this incoherent update <laughs> We shall see how this goes. We shall see if I actually finish this vlog. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll see you guys when I finish. Excuse me while I ugly cry. So, um, I know I said I was gonna update when I finished the book. So I'm about 64% of the way through. And I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my god. Okay, so like, um, as I stated before, Quinn is being blackmailed. And so every time Quinn decides not to complete a task or every time she goes against her blackmailer, something, a secret in her journal is revealed to the entire school and something was just revealed and i don't know i don't know if i can continue on for the rest of the night because mm, it's bad it's so bad like it's it's really bad and the second hand angst and embarrassment and just torture i'm feeling right now is hurting my spirit so i don't know if i can continue but also i'm a masochist so i might continue that's it for this update i am literally literally dying on the inside and i don't know how i'll be able to survive this so wish me luck <laughs> i have just finished excuse me while i ugly cry and I gave it a five out of five stars. This book was incredible. It was so freaking good. A lot more than what I was expecting, to be honest. I was just expecting a cute little romance, but what I got out of this story was so much more the way that the relationships developed from beginning to end was just so perfect i adored the relationship between quinn and carter and carter's little sister is just the cutest precious little baby being ever this story is so much more than just a romance. It deals with a lot of themes of racism, microaggressions, and chronic illness as well. And I feel like the author did a very good job of handling these themes with care. And the author doesn't shy away from showcasing complex family dynamics and the toxicity that can arise when parents have certain expectations for their kids and don't allow their kids to be their own individual person and make their own decisions the only thing i didn't really like was the ending the ending with destiny and if you've read the book you know what i'm talking about i don't think i mentioned destiny in any of my previous update clips 
but Destiny was previously known as Quinn's best friend and at the start of the story we find out that they're no longer friends for a particular reason and the way that the situation was resolved I don't know if I liked it like I like the way the situation was resolved but I don't like the fact that we gave Destiny closure for her bigotry fuckery and foolishness but that is my humble opinion I would never forgive that hoe but to each their own loved it gave it a five out of five stars would definitely recommend the next book i read for this reading vlog is going to be fake it till you bake it by jamie wesley in the story you are following our main character jada who is down on her luck she has been financially excommunicated discommunicated disowned she has been financially disowned from her family and as a result, she needs to find a job. The second character we are following is a football player named Donovan who also owns a bakery known as the Sugar Blitz. The two meet and romance ensues. Hey, how are you guys doing? It's been a couple of days since I've read Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry and now I have moved on to Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. I started reading this a couple of days ago and I'm not gonna lie, it's been a struggle. Not because the book itself is bad, but because of me. <laughs> school has just started back up again and so like I have been distracted and this is my first time being a full-time student in a long time and just a lot of things going on in my personal life. So far I'm really enjoying this story. I'm having a lot of fun. I really love the dynamic between Jada and Donovan. Jada is the unpredictable firecracker type personality she also seems very put together on the outside but sis is a hot ass mess on the inside and honestly i can relate <laughs> and then you have donovan who's very stern very strict very much so follow the rules to the t and so I love their dynamic. It's just so much fun. And also I love the way Jada teases Donovan. It's hella, hella cute. The side characters are fun. I'm enjoying the side characters. They're not really there a lot in the story, but I enjoy them nonetheless. The only thing is that so far in the story, there is no smut. There's only been kissing, which is cute it's fine but like you know give me a little spice you know what i'm saying but other than that this is a fun read i'm enjoying my time so far um i will give you guys an update once i finish fake it till you bake it Alrighty, so it's been a couple of days since i last updated this reading vlog and i have finished Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. Now, for the most part, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was cute. I love the character dynamics. Jada is a really fun character to be following. Jada is like very hot-headed and very impulsive. And that is contrasted by Donovan being very cool, calm, collected, and logical. And so I really loved their relationship dynamic. There really isn't much to talk about in about this book, simply because it is a adult romance. I feel like with 
excuse me while I ugly cried even though that was a romance it dealt with a lot more themes and discussions but fake it till you bake it is like strictly a romance and you're just there for a really good time which made it very fun and easy and quick to read but it's also very hard to discuss because I'm the type of person that likes to discuss books in great detail. I will say even though the story didn't explore as many themes as in depth, it did explore themes of complex family dynamics. Donovan is estranged from his father and Jada has a lot of trauma from her parents. And so it was interesting seeing how the author dealt with the trauma and the issues that those two had to deal with when dealing with their parents. Angle might be slightly different and that is because my battery died. But as I was saying, because this is an adult romance, I was expecting a little bit more smut and we only got one scene. <laughs> and then like there is a second scene but it was fade to black and so if you're the type of person who's not a big fan of sex in your romances and you prefer fade to black you might prefer you might really enjoy this story um despite the lack of smut I did find this a very enjoyable read. It was very quick and easy and I was incredibly invested in their romance. I feel like the one thing that took away from my enjoyment is the fact that I was hella, hella busy. <laughs> School recently started and it's my first time in a long time as a full-time university student and plus I got some stuff going on in my personal life and so I wasn't able to just sit down and binge read this book in a single sitting like I did with excuse me while I ugly cry however this is still an enjoyable story I would still highly recommend and I look forward to reading more works from the author. The third book I decided to read for this reading vlog is called Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. In this story we are following our main character Eva Mercy who is a single mother, a prolific author and also has chronic illness. The second character we are following is Shane and Shane is also a prolific writer but he deals with alcohol addiction. These two met when they were in high school. They had a romance but as time has gone on they've sort of fallen out of each other's life. This story is basically following them as they reconnect in adulthood. Alrighty, so it's been a couple of days since I last updated this vlog. Several weeks, actually. Um... <laughs> But yes, I, for, for the past couple of weeks, I have been reading Seven Days in June. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been low-key struggling to get through with it. Not because of the book's fault necessarily, but mostly because I've started back up with school. And so I don't have as much time to read as I did during my two-week break. And so I've been struggling to get through this. And it also doesn't help that this book deals with a lot of dark subject matter that I wasn't expecting. The main character, Eva Mercy, ha is dealing with a chronic illness and is constantly using drugs as a way to cope 
with her issues and then you have the male main character i forgot his name and i'm so tired i can't be bothered to look it up <laughs> but you have the male main character who is an alcoholic and he's struggling with his sobriety and this is basically a second chance romance story and i don't know how to feel about this story i'm gonna be completely honest i don't know if i'm rooting for this romance because it's so toxic and so codependent and going into this vlog i wanted black love but what i also wanted was healthy black love like i'm toxic codependent dysfunctional romance i was not prepared for that there are a lot of mentions of substance abuse which is how the main couple got together if you will and i was not expecting that this story also deals with themes of trauma addiction chronic illness and i don't think that the author necessarily did a terrible job at exploring these themes but i feel like we could have done better we could have we could have done a better job i don't know how but i just i feel it in my spirit one thing i do appreciate about this story is the relationship between eva and her daughter Eva is a single mom. Eva is very determined as a mother to give her daughter everything she never had in life and they're very close and they love and adore each other very much and I really enjoyed that aspect of the story. In terms of the romance, not really feeling it. I, th I feel like these two characters need therapy. Like they need to go their separate ways get help get therapy before they can come together and i also feel like everything is just going so fast and so quickly that it feels like whiplash as i stated before i'm 80 percent of the way through i'm hoping to finish this tonight and maybe give an update either tomorrow or when i finish it but so far this i feel like this might be a three star for me don't know how i'm feeling but uh we we shall see how this goes but yes that is it for this bootlegged update of this vlog Alrighty, so random update before i go to bed i think the main reason why i'm struggling with this novel is because the other two are like really cute contemporary romances and even though they deal with difficult subjects they're still very much cute adorable fun and a good time and i feel like this one has a lot of black trauma in it when what i was expecting was a cutesy fun, lighthearted, contemporary romance. So I do think that my expectations of this story are affecting my overall enjoyment. But yes, that is it for this raggedy update. Bye. Alrighty. So it's been a couple of days since I finished seven days in June and honestly I'm feeling a little bit conflicted on one hand I recognize that it's a good story it's a well written story for the most part however in terms of personal enjoyment I don't think I liked this 
as much as I could have. I think the biggest issue I had with this story is the expectations I had going into it. I was looking for some black love romance and I was looking for fun, cutesy romances. And this isn't it. Seven Days in June is not a cutesy fun romance and it's not trying to be a cutesy fun romance. It deals very, very heavily with themes of abuse, mental illness, substance abuse, self-harm, codependency, trauma, and just a lot of heavy themes that I honestly wasn't expecting. And I think another reason why I didn't love this story as much is because I was not rooting for the romance at all. <laughs> like I just saw two incredibly dysfunctional people who needed therapy trying to fix each other not necessarily fix each other, but like getting together with a lot of baggage and with a lot of emotional, physical, mental trauma. And the author did try to address the trauma and address the codependency at the very end of the book. However, I don't think that the issues were completely resolved. The author gives the characters a chapter, which in terms of the story is a week, a couple of days to deal with their trauma and try to heal from their past life. However, they didn't really heal and they just got together without actually putting in the work to help themselves. <laughs> like, I, mm, I just, I don't see how a relationship like that could work, if I'm being completely honest. Here's the thing. I think overall that this is a well-written book and I think that if you're going in with certain expectations, this story could potentially be a new fave for you. But because my expectations were so off, this just didn't work for me at all. And it's my fault because before starting this video, I was just looking up black love romance recommendations. And this is one of the recommendations that popped up a lot. So without reading the synopsis, without doing any research, I just dove straight in. And that definitely affected my enjoyment of the story. I do think that sometimes unexpected stories have the potential to be surprising in the best way possible. However, that is just not the case for me personally. Overall, if I had to give this a rating, I'd probably give it a 2.5 stars, maybe round it up to three stars. Like it's good, it's well written, but it's just not for me. That is going to be it for this update. The final book I read for this reading vlog is actually a graphic novel and that is going to be Bingo Love by T. Franklin. In this story, we are following our main character, Hazel, who is in love with her best friend. And we're basically following Hazel's life from middle school up until she is a senior citizen. And we're following the romance between Hazel and her best friend, Marie. Okay, so the final book I'm hoping to read for this vlog 
is actually a graphic novel and that is going to be bingo love i don't know if you can see it it's hella shiny but yes um all i know about this is that it is a sapphic romance between two black women we love to see it i started reading this several years ago i was actually supposed to read it for the blackathon but i didn't get to it and so i'm very excited to be reading this for this vlog this is super short and i'm i've already started it as you can tell can you yeah so like i'm about this much of the way through it update for what i have read of it so far it's really cute it's really fun i love the friendship because this is such a short graphic novel i feel like the pacing is going hella fast and we're just skipping through time but i don't really have much thoughts because it's super short and i'm only a couple pages in but yeah I will update you guys when I'm done with this graphic novel. That could be later tonight. It could be in five months from now. <laughs> but we shall see. Yeah, that is going to be it for this update. I have finally finished reading Bingo Love. And I'm not gonna lie, towards the end it made me hella emotional. I didn't cry, but I was sad, <laughs> not gonna lie. Like the ending really hit me in my feels. For the most part, I think this is a well-written graphic novel. The art style is really gorgeous. I really like the art style, if you can even see that. I enjoyed the two main characters. I enjoyed their romance. I thought it was sweet cute and precious my biggest co complaint however is that this is hella hella fucking short <laughs> maybe a little bit too short i believe this edition of bingo love is 96 ish pages and as a result the author can't really go into as much detail and depth with the story and as a result there are multiple time skips throughout this entire series which is fine but i wish there were certain aspects of the story that we could have delved deeper into and not only that but like there were also ads within this graphic novel for other graphic novels within this series. So one example is the main character decides to travel the world. And instead of us actually getting to see the travel, instead of us getting to experience that, it's briefly mentioned and after that there is like a little text box that says oh if you want to read about this pick up the other book in the series and i'm not necessarily opposed to that like get your coin sis you know we need to make money to survive i feel like it would have been better if instead of getting a bunch of ads for separate graphic novels that we could have just gotten one whole story and the story could have been fully fleshed out. But another reason why the ads really bothered me is that like it would take away from my immersion into the story. But because I would read the text and then I would read this random ad, it would take me out of the story and I feel like that definitely affected my enjoyment besides the few criticisms i have i do think that for the most part this is a well written graphic novel the two main characters are so cute and sweet and i really enjoy their dynamic and their love and it just it makes me feel some type of way i'm not gonna lie 
In terms of characters, there's a character in here. Her name is Miriam. So annoying. So annoying. Out of all of the characters, I think she was the most irritating, the most irksome, the most bothersome character. But other than that, all of the other characters were fine. Except for the homophobic characters, of course. If I had to rate this, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Would definitely recommend if you're interested in picking this up. Pick it up. It's really cute. That is going to be it for my final check-in for this vlog. Yay! So that is going to be it for today's video. If you've read any of these books, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what you thought of them. If you've reached the end of the video, feel free to comment a black heart emoji. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope to see you guys soon with another video. And until then, I will see you soon. Bye.